Every day in Connecticut, we lose three people to drug or alcohol-related overdose. And for every life lost, between eight and 10 are saved. When a person survives, he or she has another chance at life and at recovery. If you're in an emergency or feeling hopeless, a face like mine is one that you might see coming to help. At the Waterbury Fire Department, we're here for you. I'm Chief Terry Ballou, and you can come see me to learn more about how to help someone struggling with an addiction. Good evening um, and welcome to the Board of Aldermen for Monday, December 13th, 2021. We're going to call to order at this point the public hearing for the purpose of soliciting input with respect to the adoption of an ordinance for a land bank authority. Recording in progress. So anyone who wishes to address the board with respect to the land bank ordinance, um, we will be calling you back. You should have called in by now. Um, when you get on to begin speaking, please just state your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Uh, there is a five minute limit and I'll give you a one minute heads up. And if you want to talk about something other than the land bank, then we'll do that during public speaking um, when we get to the regular meeting. So with that, if we can get the first caller. Okay, caller, go ahead. Are you there? Do we have them? I'm not getting anything. Caller, are you there? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not here to speak. I'm here just to listen into the meeting. Okay. So did you, this is just the line for those who want to do public speaking. If you just want to hear the meeting, you would need to go to, to YouTube or to uh, watch it on public, uh, the public access channel. Okay, what's the address for YouTube? Um, it's, uh, you'd have to go onto the, the agenda and get it. Um, so on the city's website, pull down the agenda and then it'll have the address for you to access it that way. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, the next caller. Are you, there? Are you there? Yes, there. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, because there was silence. Okay. Um, we can hear you now. Can you let me know if there's feedback. Um, Sharon Samoska here, 45 Pier Street in Waterbury, 06708-203-597-8073. Well, you, you don't need to give us your phone number for this, just the, just the address. Okay. I wasn't sure. Um, I am asking you tonight to truly listen to us and to provide us insight 
and that this is more than a procedural formality or an exercise. 15 minutes of time to listen to your responses is kind of short. What is the purpose of creating this organization, which is another organization or group to work with abandoned properties? Is this considered a Connecticut Brownfield Land Bank, which falls under the Connecticut Act? Has an application been made and or approved through DEEP? What policies and procedures have been discussed or formulated already? Why is this program so attractive to the city when we already have WDC, the COG, the Blight Department, the Joint Group of Waterbury and Naugatuck, our access to DEEP, to EPA? What does the land bank do that these don't do? What properties are you hoping to remediate? My understanding is that the land bank is limited to tackling properties that will provide income to the city, not to protecting and enhancing the environment, and not to protecting and enhancing the health, safety, and welfare of our residents in an environmental justice city. If the land bank uses the same tools and incentives already in place, how much more than they accomplish, how is their work different and or improving a difficult situation? How does this affect the Transfer Act? As when I read some of the data, it seems that the Transfer Act is exempted. If so, I'm asking, is that a safe practice since that act requires disclosure of hazardous issues, chemicals on the sites? Will the land bank program have any control or assistance for properties that are privately owned as the act that I read seems to indicate land cannot be taken by eminent domain? And again, we see that a brownfield privately owned, the laws don't apply the same. How can the land bank either handle or not handle a privately owned area? And a good example is the Bristol Babcock Company in the south end of town. It's a danger. It's a threat. Discussion has been happening about it for years, and yet it stands further deteriorating with viable, friable asbestos probably there as well as many chemicals and kids still getting on there. Will a land bank with the act indicating there is protection for liabilities of cleanup on the lender and developer side lead to less monitoring of and less extensive cleanup? What does the Land Bank Act state concerning proper outreach to an environmental justice community, which we are, and which in effect does give us some benefits that a non-EJ community does not have? Are positions on the land bank paid? And if so, by whom are they paid? What is the cost to the city to create this group? Please explain the benefits and whatever the shortcomings of the program are so we as citizens and residents can be involved in our world, in our community, to the betterment of all and for you working with us. And I would appreciate that opportunity to do that. Thank you. Do we have the next caller or are we trying to get him on the line?
I don't know. They're trying to get them. Hello. Okay, they're Hello, Cody. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, is this for the towing contract for the city of Waterbury? No, this is the public hearing for the land bank ordinance. We'll do the uh, if you have other comments you want to make, you can do those during the regular meeting. That's the next phase. They'll call you back for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so we need to go to the next caller. We have the next caller for the public hearing. I'm not calling any number. Hi, Mr. Pernaruski, something's going wrong here. I have. Uh, I have a person on the other line who I have no idea who he is. Hey, they may have called you back again. Did they just call you? Yeah, but this is Alan Cody or a name like that. I am. I do want to speak at the next part at the regular okay. board of aldermen meeting, but I know yep. that there are other people who want to speak now. I know we're trying to get them. So just give okay. us a, a moment. Try Thank again. you. Yep. All right. Bye. to get them on get the next speaker on Are you there, caller? Are you there, caller? Hello. Is anybody out there? Could anybody hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Martin. Okay. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road, Waterbury. 
I've been trying to get through. I got like uh, disconnected three times. I just I want to let you know that. We're having I know. Some problems, I, I understand. So. That's okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad to uh, be able to speak. Okay. Again, Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road, Waterbury. I'd like to speak on the land bank authority created by our local government here in Waterbury, which duties will include to manage and dispose of all vacant properties, vacant lots, or abandoned land, tax delinquent areas that hopefully can be re redeveloped for more positive results throughout the city, including open space, space, which we are in dire need of. As far as appointments on this newly created panel, I believe seven, if I'm right, they should all live in Waterbury from businesses located in our town. Uh, several uh, from various neighborhood groups should uh, be appointed on this board, and hopefully somebody from the Waterbury Human Rights Commission consider most of these folks on the panel will be volunteers. So i like to say briefly, let's all come together for the betterment of the city of Waterbury, and uh, there's a lot of things that have to be done and a lot of uh, vacancies, uh, if you will, with buildings vacant buildings that have to uh, be raised and come down. And so um, I'm looking forward to uh, working with, uh, you know, the mayor, the members of the Board of Aldermen and uh, various administrations uh, throughout the city and departments. And again, like I said, if uh, you guys are going to be appointing people on the board, I hopefully you can at least get somebody on uh, from the Waterbury uh, Neighborhood Council, various community group leaders, if you will, or even somebody, and also, again, somebody from the uh, Waterbury Human Rights Commission. We have a, a lot of minorities on our commission, and they would uh, they would love to serve on that. And so um, that's all I have to say. I know you guys have a lot of technical problems tonight, and I'm going to try to call in on the regular board of all the meeting. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. There's no other callers for the public hearing.
Okay, go ahead, Tom. Are you there? Hello? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Oh, no, it's Kyle Brewer, 47 okay. Hopkins Street. Are you no. calling about the uh, ordinance? No. It's, about the, it's about the land bank. Yep, all um, right. Just go so, ahead. I'm sorry. Like just know, how are you? before you just state your name and address for the record for me again. I'm um, Kyle Brewer, 47 Hopkins Street, Waterbury, Connecticut. 06704. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I would like to know how are y'all going to go about picking the committee and how are y'all going to go about picking the requirements for people who to participate in the land bank, as in like construction workers and whatever that's what i want that's that's the topic i want to bring up and that's it thank you okay thank you I'm sorry, we're just having trouble with the getting connected to the callers this evening. And our IT folks are trying to work it through.
Hello? Yes, are you there? Yes, good evening, Mr. President. Thomas Pelletier, 112 Concord Street. Glad to be with you guys tonight. Uh, as far as the land bank, uh, land bank ordinance, I am in full support of it. I believe it's going to be a game changer for the city of Waterbury and its continued efforts to attack uh, the war on blight in the city of Waterbury and dilapidated buildings. Uh, this is just going to be another tool uh, to the assets that we've already been using to uh, uh, go after dilapidated buildings and uh, blighted properties in the city of Waterbury. Uh, I believe that this board and the administration are going to pick some highly qualified people uh, to, uh, you know, help us in this endeavor. I know it's been a commitment of this administration since taking office to uh, go block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, to do what's best for the citizens of the city, uh, whether it's uh, dilapidated buildings, blighted buildings, uh, blight, and, uh, you know, landlords that uh, have taken off and not done the right thing for the citizens of the city. Um, we're going to need uh, this land bank. And now that the state and uh, federal government uh, seem to be giving us uh, more money, and not only in the city, but uh, the state and the cities to attack uh, blight and uh, help our uh, our citizens um, have a, a better life uh, with uh, uh, their uh, neighborhoods. Uh, I think that this is a great tool and it's gonna be uh, much needed. And I would ask that you pass this. Thank you very much. Okay, time's done, yeah, we get to the next caller. And we may have the, the list may be mixed up for the public speaking and the public hearing. So they'll, if they get back to you and you're for the regular meeting, we'll just put you on hold and come back to you. So, and that should help the process move along. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so that appears to be it for the public speakers for the public hearing. So with that, we'll close the public hearing and we'll call to order the regular meeting for the Board of Aldermen for Monday, uh, December 13th, 2021. If everyone could 
please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. All the Present. All the Alvaro. Present. All the Medici Alden Carlo. Here. All the Mendorso. Here. All the Hunter. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Markey. Here. Alderman Matthews. Here. Alderman Martinez McCarthy. Here. Alderman Nujang. Present. Alderman Roman. Here. Alderman Salvo. Present. Alderman Weaver. Here. Alderman Simmerman. Present. Alderman Karnowski. Here. 15 present. Thank you. Um, with that, we're going to go to uh, public speaking and we'll call back all those who are on the list. Anyone who was on the list and somehow thinks they didn't connect, uh, please fall back in and we'll get you back on the list. So, and with that, let's go to uh, public speaking. We'll get the first speaker. Do you have a speaker? If you're satisfied with the message, press 1. To listen to your message, press 2. Hello? Are you there, speaker? Hello? Yep, go ahead. State, state your name and address for the record. And uh, then go ahead. Paul Amatruda, 329 Walnut Street, Waterbury, Connecticut, from Hook and Go. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm calling regarding the tolling contract. Okay. Uh -huh. Did you have something you wanted to say about it? Yeah, um, I applied for my business and contract, and I haven't heard anything back from it yet, and I was wondering if we were approved, and I was wondering if, why the city of Waterbury. I was wondering why the city of Waterbury hasn't gotten back to me yet. And wondering okay. if the other tow companies but it called to sign a paper down at the police station. My company was the only one that was never called down to sign. Okay, well, there's an item on this evening. There's a, there's a number of co companies that'll be going under contract, and I think there were a couple that didn't um, qualify. They were pending further review by the PD. So uh, maybe you're among those, and we can take a look at it. <laughs> So is there okay. is there reasons why we didn't qualify? I, I don't know. This is just for the a public speaking where you can come and give your comments on things. It's not really a, a back and forth. So you would need to call whoever you submitted your paperwork to and check with them if you did not qualify. So this is just 
um, I don't know. I just feel like I was singled out this whole time because it's been very hard. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Does another tow company get the final say on who gets the, the contract or not? It's it's not a question and answer period. So it's a free opportunity for you to call in and make comments or statements to the board. But we're not going to go back and forth on all of that. If you have particular questions on your application, you need to call uh, the PD, which is, I think, where you submitted it. All right, so I have to speak to the PD is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I definitely think you're not giving the small businesses a chance to proceed in the city of Washington. Okay. 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 Do we have the next caller? Caller, are you there? Is there somebody there? Benelli. Oh, you should be there. Paula? Yes. Go ahead. Please you state your name and address for the record. Sure. Joseph Violet from the Waterbury Regional Chamber, 83 Bank Street. Go ahead. Sure. My name is Joseph Violet, Director of Public Policy and Economic Development from the Greater Waterbury. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony regarding the proposed ordinance to establish a city land bank for the city of Waterbury. The Waterbury Regional Chamber supports this ordinance that will further help the city acquire and rehabilitate abandoned and blighted properties. Many of these vacant lots and properties are unsafe and un unhealthy for residents. These unsightly properties contribute to much of the urban decay found in our downtown area adversely affecting the prosperity of city businesses. Fortunately, Mayor O'Leary and his administration have prioritized Brownfield's remediation and, and anti-blight strategies to combat these issues. A city land bank will further this work and enable blighted properties to be made shovel ready for development and contribute to the grand list. Creating a land bank will be pivotal for the management of vacant lots and properties so they can be redeveloped for better, more productive use. Doing so, will continue to help the economic development and redevelopment efforts throughout the city, allowing businesses to grow and thrive. The Chamber is prepared to partner with the city on these efforts. We will continue to advocate for related and supportive policy changes in Hartford. Please, please do not hesitate to contact us if we can be a resource or a conduit to carry out the mission of the proposed land bank. Thank you for the time and consideration to this testimony. Thank you. Um, can we get the next caller on the line? Paul, are you there? Hi, Mr. Pernaruski. I am. There's quite a delay between the time that these gentlemen call us that we are next to speak and when apparently you're getting the signal. I can okay. also tell you Steve Schrag's been trying to get in if you can get him on. Um, I wanted to speak briefly about an incident. Would you just, I'm sorry, for this, would you restate state your name oh, and I'm address? Sorry. Thank you. Sharon, Sharon Samoska, 45 Pear Street in Waterbury, 06708. Thank you. Go, go ahead. I'm, I'm asking. Sorry. It's okay. It's a confusing night. I wish you could just postpone that first hearing and or at least continue it next week or the next time you meet so people have the opportunity to speak. Um, for at this point um, at the meeting, I'm asking that our city and certainly with the board's input and guidance develop a program likely due to COVID issues, a Zoom meeting for residents in the individual areas in our city or in group regarding gang violence and juvenile crime and youth assaults in our city, who by where they live and or their backgrounds seem to be potential targets for violence. 
This happened on my street two weeks ago. I am astounded that I am seeing so much difficulty with our teens. And we need to do something in this residence. We need to understand what to do. I strongly suggest outreach in advance of any neighborhood community group meeting to encourage folks to come and within each area and then possibly in areas together to get a program going so that when these events that are so worrisome to us, what can we do about it? As residents, when an event occurs, what should we be doing? I heard of a person watching what happened and doing nothing. To me, when a young person is assaulted, I don't think I could stand there and do nothing. But I don't know what to do. What do we do? How can we prevent these acts from escalating? What can we do to prevent these attacks from reaching the violence level? How do we keep juveniles who are under the age of 16 out of cars? A program with case examples would be of much benefit to encourage residents to take action as well as local students. Do we need more police officers to handle the increasing issues? What organizations are effective in working with youth, perhaps PAL? Are more police patrols needed for preventive action? Actually, I rarely see a police car traveling up my street. I see them two streets away. I do not see them coming up mine. Should residents be reporting any strange cars or people in their area? And if so, to whom and what follow-up will occur? One day in our area last week, a young adult male, I saw him walking up and down our streets for several hours with a backpack on. No one from the neighborhood, but he just kept walking up and down and up and down. Is it our responsibility to call? And if our police are involved in serious issues, they can't come. You know, we already know that the abandoned factory below us is a site where people in youth gain entrance and can congregate. I'm really concerned that this is a site where gangs could build a nest. Our cities and towns working together on this, especially where Waterbury touches the borders of other towns. And I would also suggest, if you have not watched the Freedom Riders movie, I strongly feel it is something to see. It has strong parallels to what we are experiencing in this city. And when I was watching it, it's a microcosm of what we have. And our particular church is looking into this. I also ask that in our city, we please do something about the fact in the last two weeks, every single red light, I've had a green light. There's a red light for opposing traffic. I have counted up to three to four cars, especially on South Main Street and Platts Mill, going 50 miles per hour or more going through those lights. Two days ago, a large gas tanker truck near Home Depot was stopped in the lane to go left. The light was clearly red. Other cars were starting to move, and that truck went right through the red light. I have seen buses and school buses and vans doing this. What can we do about this before someone gets seriously injured or a child runs out and gets killed? I don't One understand minute, this. Samoska. And that's all I wanted to say. And I just, I just please ask that we look into these two issues and take some action and help residents to know what to do. You can do that for us and you're good at it. So please rise to the challenge. Thank you. Thank you. The next caller. Caller, are you there? Are you on, Steve? Steve, are you there? I'm sorry. What? Okay, we're going to go on to the the next caller. We're trying to get Steve back on, please. We get the next caller. Martin, are you there? Oh yes, yes, go I ahead, am Martin. here. Um, Martin. Okay, I'm sorry again. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road, Waterbury. Um. I am here to talk to you about some other issues uh, pertaining to uh, things uh, alluding to Waterville. Um, we had uh, somebody in Waterville Park 
Well, I don't know if it was with an ATV or dirt bike, but they broke the fence on the top of the hill. And we're looking to get some new signs up there. And it's a good thing I spoke to some gentlemen from the uh, park department. They're going to turn around and they're going to get us some new signs. And we do appreciate that. Also in Waterville, um, I know there's a lot of federal monies coming in and state grants uh, right now and, uh, you know, coming in from Washington. So I did want to say this, that um, right now we have an old brownfield that's been vacant for many years through uh, several administrations. And uh, this goes way back, probably decades. And that's the old Verjune Manufacturing Company on Chapel Street in Waterville section of town. I know when I was uh, a kid, I worked there, and, uh, you know, it was an old islet uh, operating uh, facility, if you will, islet machine shop. And, uh, you know, we all worked there when we lived in Waterville because we didn't have to obviously drive. We walked there. But right now, that building's been vacant for so long, Mr. President, members of the Board of All Men. I was hoping that the building, mm-hmm. with all the money coming okay. in, that maybe this building could be raised or knocked down or replaced. But, uh community garden adopted and taken care of by the Waterville Community Club with pride or turned over for a parking lot uh, supported by local businesses in the area. And uh, I just was hoping that maybe we could talk about that in the near future. Um, I know uh, the Waterville Community Club is not going to be meeting until probably March uh, because we're off for a couple of months for the winter. So I just thought I'd let you guys know. So Maybe in the future uh, we could uh, communicate or get in touch with each other. And uh, maybe I could uh, go with some members of the Board of Aldermen. I know a lot of you people work and you're really busy and show you uh, the problems we're having over there with the old Virgin Manufacturing Company, which is, um, you know, I don't know who owns it anymore. I don't know if there's any tax abatements on there, if there's any money that's owed or anything like that. But I know that that building's got to come down and we have problems over there with a few fires in the past and homeless people breaking in there and, you know, trying to find a place to stay and get out of the cold. So I was just hoping that maybe some members of the Board of Aldermen could meet me down there by the old Waterville Firehouse and I could show you what I'm talking about. And um, and that's something else. And then a few other things we need done in the park. And uh, that is the uh, in the tennis court over there, we've been working on that with the park department and park commissioners, and I appreciate that. And the uh, the tennis court is also going to be probably fixed up. And I know we also was talking about getting some things done over there in the basketball uh, court. Also, I want to say in conclusion that um, right now, uh, you know, I'm speaking as chairman of Waterbury Human Rights Commission. We're still waiting for several new appointees on the Waterbury Human Rights Commission to make a full complement on the board, which would be nine, including an automatic representative. Um, nobody ever got back to me from the mayor's office. I know we're getting into holiday season, but before the new year, or at least in 2022, I hope that we could at least get those boards filled so uh, we could start working with the administration and members of the Board of Wallman and anybody else who wants to get involved with the uh, Waterbury Human Rights Commission. Again, um, I thank you for your time, and I'm sorry for what happened today because I tried to get in more than once, and I don't think I got deliberately hung up on I just think, you know, had a glitch in the system. So I just thought I'd let you guys know. And I can't wait until we start meeting face-to-face because, you know, I'd be more than happy to come down here. So... I want to thank uh, all, all you members of the Board of Aldermen for what you do in the city of Waterbury, both Republican and Democrat. I think you guys do an outstanding job, and you're, you're working for uh, the po- positive achievements for the uh, city of Waterbury. And I thank you, Paul, for uh, supporting us and uh, coming to our, um, our meetings as much as you do. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Okay, do we have another caller? Steve, okay. Hello? Hi, Steve, are you there? Good evening, this is Steve Schrag. To whom am I speaking? Paul Paul Poneruski. You're on the- Hi, Paul, how are you? You're on public speaking at the meeting, Steve, so. Okay, thank you. You let me know when to start. Yeah, go ahead. If you just give your name and address and then you can go ahead. 
Will do. My name is Stephen Schrag. I live at 14 Quinton Street, Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, I want to speak to a couple of issues. One is specifically regarding the idea of a land bank. Um, we used to have a land bank in Waterbury. It was called the Waterbury Development Authority. It was the, the, the responsibilities for that land bank was turned over to the Waterbury Development Corporation. And instead of doing what we need to do, which is have a land trust, which is to hold some of our green land in trust, not play monopoly with, with properties on, in the city, I have watched 40 years of development in Waterbury in both Democratic and Republican administrations. It's always been development in the dark. We need to shine a bright light on the process of development in the city. Not a secret committee that proposed the Shapto Mall. Not a mysterious investor that backed the casino. Not a small Hartford committee that gave money to a New Jersey polluter to come to Waterbury. We need to use a bottom-up process, such as a charrette, for development. We need to pull together information on resources that are available. We need to conduct a community needs survey. We need to facilitate a community discussion. We need to find overlap of the needs and resources and prioritize based on community needs. A land bank would not, would not serve, it does not appear to serve this. A, a land trust could. I guess I'm urging the alderman that if you're going to do anything, look at a land trust, not a land bank. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have another caller on the line? Caller, are you there? Yes. Okay, please just state your name and address for the record, and then you can go ahead and address the board. Sally Riddick, 36 Camp Street. Go ahead, um, Ms. Riddick. Okay, I'm, I was calling to um, uh, find out more about this uh, land bank light that, you, that was in a newspaper. Because um, up here on uh, Camp and Orange Street, on Camp Street, it's uh, parking on both sides of the street. And sometimes it's hard to even get by because only one car can go up at a time. Only one can go up. Another car has to wait until somebody can move out of the way. And the other problem is that um, there's uh, rubbish. The policeman came and put a note on the door because of the rubbish at 34 and 32 Camp Street. But how long do you have to wait for somebody to clean up the rubbish? Because he, uh, he came last week and nobody has cleaned it up yet. And it's falling out in the street. There's so much rubbish over there. And another thing, on Orange Street, the um, I've complained about this before. On Orange Street, when it rains hard, the uh, dirt and the little pebbles or rocks, whatever you call them, they come down and they stop in front of my house on Orange Street because my house is on the corner of Camp and Orange Street. And I wonder, is anything anybody can do to stop this from happening? Okay, do you have anything else you wanna to say to us? And that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, what I did wanna know was about this, this um, land bank. Will you be talking about that later in your meeting? Yes, actually, we're going to take that up. Um, we're doing the public hearing this evening, and there may be some comments um, a little bit later about it, but the actual vote and the discussion will be the following regular meeting, which is January 10th. So we will be discussing it more on the 10th. Okay. All right. I'm interested in that. I never heard about it, so... Because okay. I like the way these houses look on uh, Gaffney Place. So uh, thank okay. you for your time. 
Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Do, do we have an, another caller? One more? Go ahead, Go ahead. caller. Yes, Adam Cross, uh, 24 Chase River Road, Waterbury. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Cross. How are you doing? I'm calling regarding the towing contract for the city. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to know uh, where does it stay in the uh, the business of the with the city tow contract that you have to be uh, registered three registered trucks for three years. I didn't see that anywhere. And um, I wanted to know. Uh, I thought we were all the trucks got to be registered with U.S. DOT numbers on them all. Okay, this is um, not sort of a, a question and answer or back and forth. So if you have comments or statements you want to make to us, we'll take them in and consider them. Um, but th that's it. And then if, if you have particular questions about your application, you'll need to call the police department where you submitted it and they can tell you what the issues are or what the shortcomings were, if that's what your concern is. Okay, because I thought uh, by the contract that uh, I was already pointing <coughs> that I'd be on the city contract for this year coming. But it looks, you know what I mean? So I'm just calling to see what's going on. What's the next thing? Okay, I, we have a list of towing contractors we'll be taking up at the item this evening. There's eight of them that they're looking to add on. Uh, there's a couple of others who I think were not deemed qualified, but they're still reviewing it further. But if you have particular questions about That's your contract and your application, you would need to call the PD to discuss it with them. Ask you a question. Where does it say on the city of Woodbury contract that you're looking for eight? It's not on there. I'd like to see that in writing. You know what I mean? That's kind of like, you know, you're talking eight people. That's like a monopoly. You got to let everyone get a shot. You know what I mean? Yes. As I said, this is not a this is not a, um, a question and answer period. It's just public comment. So you can make your comments. You have five minutes to do that. And if you have more to say, we'll listen to you. But we're not going to go back and forth um, and address all of the questions that you have. It's it's not the forum for all that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that was the last caller that we had. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, the board, before we go to the next item, just stand down for the two minutes. We're not going to adjourn, but I just need um, two minutes, and then we'll come and pick it up with uh, the minutes and the rest of the meeting. So give me two.
Okay, <clears throat> thank you for your patience for those couple of minutes. And I do wanna say, we obviously had uh, some significant technical difficulties this evening. Um, in, in all the time we've been doing this, we have not had these kinds of problems. And unfortunately tonight was the night when, um, when we did have them. So I apologize to all of those who were trying to call in and were frustrated by it. I appreciate those who, who stuck it out. I do want to <clears throat> point out at this point that the, um, the vote on this item for the, uh, the land bank is going to be on the next regular meeting, which is January 10th. So we're not gonna vote on it tonight. What we will do is have another public hearing um, at 6.30 on the 10th so that people who didn't call in or even people who wanna call in because it was so confused tonight again, will have an opportunity to speak to it again because I want everyone to feel that they've had that opportunity to do that. So we will reschedule that for the vote um, and we'll go from there. So, um, and again, I apologize. It's the first time we've had these kinds of serious problems trying to get this done and we'll, we'll definitely get those worked out. So the next item on the agenda then would be the approval of minutes for the meeting of Monday, November 15th, 2021, which was the regular meeting via um, Zoom and then the organizational meeting for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the minutes as presented and no vote to disapprove them. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. Um, the next item on the agenda is the mayor's report and he is here this evening and wishes to address us. So Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, first of all, I want to, uh, uh, if, they're still, if they're still present at the meeting, any of the folks who had questions regarding the towing contracts, I would strongly encourage them to call the Waterbury Police Chief, Fred Spagnolo, and Attorney Mark Olette over at the Police Department. Uh, they handle the, uh, Police Department handles the towing contracts, and the paperwork that's submitted goes directly to them. So if there's questions, they can certainly get the answers. If they don't get the answers they need, then they should call my office and ask for me directly. Moving on to the land bank. So we do apologize, as President Penaruski had stated, uh, we had uh, some software issues tonight, which were obviously not used to having issues, as uh, was stated. We've uh, We've gotten pretty good at these uh, public at these uh, Zoom meetings, but we did have a software issue tonight, and we do apologize. We are not voting on the land bank until January 10th. Uh, Pettis, President Paderewski suggested we have another public hearing on the night of January 10th. We will do just that. We will start it at 6:30, and we will hold the public hearing open until everyone gets a chance to uh, comment if they care to do so. Um, also, this evening, we do have Mr. Brian White, who has been hired by the Harold Webster Smith Foundation. Uh, he has been uh, working very closely with the Harold Webster Smith Foundation on the land bank over the last year and a half. And um, he will do a presentation tonight, and he will also be available for the January 10th meeting as well. So stay tuned, we'll do the presentation, we'll do another public hearing on the 10th of January, and then uh, we'll have more discussion. Okay, that's all I have, Mr. President. You're muted. Sorry, you know how many people would like to be able to do that on a regular basis? So um, I apologize, but um, again, so before we go into the, uh, the committee of the whole, the only item I would note is that item number 24 on the agenda is withdrawn this evening. So we won't be taking that one up. Um, and with that, uh, Alderman Bernelli, I would entertain a motion that we resolve ourselves in the committee of the whole. So moved. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries. We're sitting as a committee of the whole. 
As, as the mayor had indicated, we have uh, Mr. White with us this evening um, for the purpose of talking about the ordinance. And so what I'm going to do without objection um, is go to old business item number three, which was a request for the public hearing and just take that up. We're not gonna vote on anything tonight, but this will be an opportunity for Mr. Uh, White to do his presentation. So Mr. White, if you're ready, you can go ahead. You got to, you've got to un unmute. Um, in there. I think Mike is coming to help you do that. There we go. Go ahead, Mr. White. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to check and see if you had an opportunity to get the presentation up on screen. So we're putting it up right now. Okay. And while that's being put up on screen, I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Brian White. I'm, uh, as the mayor said, I'm a consultant hired through funding from the Harold Webster Smith Foundation. Our organization is called eProperty Innovations. We're a company that works with land banks and other uh, local governments that are dealing with vacant and distressed property. Um, and a big number of our uh, current clients are land banks. So I've been working with the city and the stakeholders here in the city um, to develop the land bank concept. So I'm just going to try to go over tonight with a brief presentation for those that are interested. Uh, what a land bank does, what the potential for a land bank is, um, some of the questions that were raised or the comments that were raised earlier this evening are, were really fantastic and they really speak to the passion that people have um, in Waterbury that I've seen over the last uh, year around this issue. Um, so the first thing just to mention by way of grounding the, the concept of the land bank, the state of Connecticut adopted legislation that became active in 2020 that allows municipalities to authorize the creation of a municipal land bank. Um, and so we are going to be operating, if the land bank is approved, it'll be operating under a combination of authorization from the uh, city of Waterbury, as well as state statute that uh, specifically states what a land bank can and cannot do. For those that are not familiar with land banks, um, a land bank is a quasi-government, yeah, is a quasi-governmental or nonprofit organization is authorized to acquire, stabilize, and transfer real property usually with one or more goals as is uh, on screen. So the first one is helping to revitalize neighborhoods and, and attracting private investment. Uh, the second is reducing blight and remediating nuisance properties, which are properties that are blighted or dilapidated or obsolete or that suffer from burn, uh, fires and things like that. Um, and the, the objective is to improve the overall property conditions and property values of the surrounding neighborhood properties. So land banks typically operate in specific neighborhoods and have a specific strategic focus. And the idea is to bring up the value of property in this neighborhood and improve the quality of life for uh, folks that are living in the community. So there's really two reasons why uh, any municipality would, be, would create a land bank. The first one is to improve the systems for dealing with distressed property. And the second one is to really just increase the local community development capacity. As one of the speakers or one of the commenters earlier this evening uh, mentioned, there are a number of different organizations working around issues of blighted property in water area. And the land bank would be another uh, tool in the toolkit to help extend the capacity of the local stakeholders. It's also helping to identify areas where the system for dealing with distressed property can be improved. And so the idea of a land bank where it's adopted in most parts of the country is to try to work with existing frameworks for dealing with distressed property, whether it's around code enforcement or uh, tax for foreclosures or tax sales and things like that, and try to create more opportunities for community to have better input and control over what happens to those distressed properties and make sure that the redevelopment of those properties are working toward the, uh, the betterment of the community. Um, in terms of local community development capacity, most land banks um, are working to help complement the lack of neighborhood capacity. And one of the things that land banks can often do is to reach out to neighborhood developers who maybe have not participated in some of these types of programs and bring them in as active participants, whether that's as contractors or rehabbers or buying homes and so forth. So the idea is to really ground the work in the community and, um, and increase that local capacity. Um, in terms of the benefits, Land banks are by design uh, supposed to be responsive to local priorities. They're supposed to be collaborative. Um, the, one of the great benefits is that a land bank can really acquire property by any means. And so if you look at the state statute, it really gives a land bank broad latitude for how it goes about acquiring property. It's also very nimble in terms of how it disposes of property. So most land banks would be putting together 
uh, strategies for how they acquire and how they dispose. They would be having lots of community engagement to explain to folks in the community how they can participate and then allows the land bank to execute those dispositions in a way that's most efficient because you're typically dealing with low value property where you wanna to try to acquire the property and move it back into productive use as efficiently as possible. Um, land banks would be also exempt from property taxes. So if a land bank is holding a piece of property, it's not accruing a lot of expense while it holds on to the property from taxes. There's a great deal of flexibility that land bank has provided in terms of how it prices property. So it's not necessarily always going to be looking for the highest price. It is obviously trying to generate a good return on its investment, but there's also community considerations, community priorities that maybe in addition to price. And so that's something that the um, land bank would have that flexibility to, um, to adopt. And then the last one, I think, which is probably the most important one is that the land bank is really designed to be an effective steward of distressed property. So when properties are held by folks that are not invested in the community or maybe are not local in the community, you tend to have issues with properties that become vandalized, that become sources of illicit activity, that become uh, blighted or blights on neighboring properties. And the land bank is designed to intervene and make sure that somebody is effectively stewarding that property, protecting the asset, and making sure it doesn't create more harm for people in the community while the land bank goes out to make it back into the productive use. This land bank uh, can be funded through a variety of different means and it may have access to funding that's not available to others. Um, I note on the slide here, a land bank does operate within market-based constraints. And what that, what that means is a land bank does not have a magic wand that allows it to change how the market operates. It is subject to supply and demand issues, cost of construction, the cost of labor, the cost of materials, the cost of financing. Land bank is subject to all of those, just like everybody else. Um, but it does provide the land bank as a flexible alternative to some of those uh, existing uh, uh, parties in the marketplace. Um, and a land bank can work on any property type. So if you look at the state statute, the state statute doesn't restrict the land bank from working on specific property types. I would caution folks that are concerned about the land bank interfering with or getting involved in uh, brownfields or some of the more complicated industrial or commercial properties. That's probably not where a land bank would want to operate. Most land banks operate with residential property, maybe some small commercial property, certainly vacant lots. Um, but for those larger, more complicated projects, you're not typically going to see a land bank getting involved, at least not you know, in, any, you know, in the near, uh, near future. So again, just to reiterate, a land bank should be, and we would, we would advocate for this, a land bank should be community-centered. It should operate very transparently. It should be highly accountable. So the board that is uh, selected to run the land bank are gonna be representative of the community stakeholders um, and are gonna be responsive to the community interests that, are, that they are representing. Um, the land bank is an independent, non-stop, non-profit organization. So it is not a function or an entity of the city government. It is a standalone independent organization. And the land bank should operate in a way that is strategic and very nimble and very constructive. What I mean by constructive is that the land bank should be able to identify places where its participation is adding value to a project, either by bringing in more resources or more technical expertise, or simply acquiring and holding property until those resources can be assembled. If you cannot identify a constructive role for the land bank, it's probably, a, it's probably indicative um, that the land bank does not have a role. So that's going to be a challenge for the land bank is to always identify what value is it adding in that particular project and always to be responding back to the community about that. Next one. Um, this slide describes some of the common activities that land banks are participating in around the country. So one of the first ones is organizing data and systems for efficiently repurposing property. So what that means is putting information at the center of what the land bank is doing and making decisions that are based on the real data, not emotion, um, not speculation, but really hard numbers and hard data, um, and having systems so that the land bank can acquire, hold, and dispose of property as a system and do it efficiently over and over and over. It's not a one-off, uh, acquire a property here, acquire a property there. It's developing a system so that people can understand when properties come in and when they're gonna come out and how to participate in those, um, those activities. The second one is developing strategies that align and plans that align with and advance community priorities. So for those who will be concerned about the land bank running amok or doing things that it shouldn't do or doing things that the community is not you know, interested in having it doing, that's actually contrary to what a land bank will do. A land bank would operate by trying to find out from the local community stakeholders and municipality 
What is it you're trying to do with these particular properties? What's the vision for this particular neighborhood? Uh, what is the plan for conservation and development? Talk about that we can apply uh, in this particular instance, wherever that property might be located. And it's always being engaged with the community so the community feels confident and feels bought in with what's happening um, with the land bank. Obviously, the land bank can acquire a whole stabilized lease or sell property. So a land bank may acquire property and hold on to it and rent it out, or it may acquire property and flip it, or it may acquire property and sit on it for a while until it figures out what it's going to do with it. All of those are um, eligible for the land bank, and it's up to the land bank to decide you know, what it wants to do with specific types of property. Um, <clears throat> the last point is the land bank in Waterbury, if it is created, is going to be specific to the needs of Waterbury. Uh, if you are somebody who goes online and reads about land banks and tries to understand what land banks do, you often hear uh, descriptions about land banks in specific cities, whether it's Detroit or Chicago or Syracuse, New York or wherever. All of those are great land banks, but they're not the land bank for Waterbury. The land bank for Waterbury is going to be grounded in Waterbury and is going to be really responding to what the needs and practical needs are of folks in Waterbury. And I think that's an important point for people to understand. In terms of funding for land banks, land banks are typically funded from a diverse array of sources. So that includes uh, public resources like the city of Waterbury or from the state or from federal resources. Um, it also includes a lot of private support. So that's foundation, corp, uh, private and corporate foundations, it could be banks, it could be individuals who are donating dollars or property. It's also a program revenue. So every land bank aspires to acquire repurpose and sell or lease property and generate some kind of return on, on its investment. Um, typically, land banks do not generate enough money to support themselves strictly from their program revenues. You have to recognize that when you're dealing with very low value, you're trying low value property, and you're trying to put it back into some productive use. It's difficult to generate a quote unquote profit from most types of properties. Not impossible, it's not unheard of. And certainly that is the goal. Um, but typically land banks are going to try to assemble different types of resources and put all those into a pot and use those to move those properties forward. Uh, oh, sure. Um, so for example, the Hartford Land Bank received a $5 million grant from the state of uh, Connecticut. That was money that was seeded by the state to help the land bank get started and to acquire and start to dispose of some of the properties that Hartford had identified. That is a potential opportunity for Waterbury um, there's also been, as, as was mentioned earlier, a lot of support from the Harold Webster Smith Foundation, and I'm sure there are other folks. I mean, Waterbury, what I've observed as an outsider is that this is a city that has a, a great deal of civic pride um, and has a great deal of commitment from pretty much everybody I've encountered. Um, so I have no doubt that there are going to be folks in all walks of uh, funding availability who want to help support the land bank. So in terms of where we are, we've been spending time um, trying to put together the pieces and identify what the potential opportunities would be for a land bank. Obviously, the ordinance is a big next step. Um, the, the state statute would require that the city authorize the land bank then import, appoint a board. Um, there are going to be uh, uh, four nominees that come from the chief executive. There's going to be one nominee from the Democratic Board of Aldermen, one from the Republican Board of Aldermen, and one that is shared. And then that is part of the ordinance, and it also aligns with state statute, which requires that you state how people will be appointed. Once those appointments are made, the land bank is essentially formed and is now operating as an independent not-for-profit, and the bylaws of the land bank then determine how future appointments get made and how people come on and come off of the land bank board. So for those that are interested in being involved uh, in the land bank, if it is created, there'll be lots of opportunities to participate uh, in the months and years to come. In terms of what we're trying to do right now, it's um, you know developing kind of a strategic plan that makes sense and is actionable for Waterbury. It's really drilling down and understanding what is the potential set of properties that the land bank could acquire, and what for what particular use. I'm encouraging as the land bank's consultant that the land bank be very entrepreneurial, meaning be open to taking risk, but don't take unnecessary risk. So we want the land bank to kind of go into every project and every property with its eyes wide open and understand. Um, what the upside potentially could be, but also recognize there's downside risk and to weigh those risks and benefits accordingly. Um, working with the market is an important point. Every land bank depends on private partners, whether it's developers or builders or contractors or others. This is, uh, you know, partnership is at the root of what land banks do successfully. So there's going to be lots of opportunities. And it's also important that the land bank build relationships and collaborate. 
So again, for those of you that were on the call and were interested in trying to understand how to participate, that will be coming if the land bank is created. Um, but you know, best practices for land banks are to operate collaboratively and with diverse relationships and with strong participation by folks working in the private sector. And I don't mean necessarily big private developers, I'm talking about neighborhood developers, neighborhood associations, people who are living in communities and understand what's happening on their block. That's the, that's the folks that land banks want to partner with. Um, the last one is, I always, you know, kind of mentioned this, <clears throat> this point about level setting expectations. Obviously, for those of you that have been in Waterbury a long time, you recognize that the issues of light that have been created in Waterbury were not created overnight, they're not going to be solved overnight. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes deliberation, it takes steady work. Um, so it's really important that folks understand that the, the land bank is a tool, it is not a panacea, it doesn't have a magic wand, it may not produce huge results right out of the gate, but the objective is to get it up and running as quickly as possible and as much efficiency as possible to start showing those results as soon as it is uh, practically able to do so. So these uh, last couple of slides I have, one is just kind of a, a general possible timeline for um, Waterbury. Um, the, the land bank, if it is formed, would have to establish or will establish a memorandum of understanding with the city of Waterbury that defines what each the city and the land bank will be doing vis-a-vis -vis each other. So in the first quarter of 2022, we could envision that that MOU is being created. The land bank is getting stood up with you know, basic organizational structure, budget, staffing plan, and so forth. Um, and then the first step really is looking to hire the first staff, which would be an executive director. So that would be like first quarter of 2022. If we are <clears throat> looking at the second quarter, starting roughly in April of 2022, then you start to see the land bank securing funding coming in. An executive director is hired, it's finalizing its policies and procedures. It's getting prepared in probably third quarter of 2022 to start taking action, hiring contractors, initiating acquisitions, hiring additional staff, and really getting up and running. So in my experience, I think it's completely realistic that within six to nine months, a land bank can be operational up to and including acquiring property and getting moving on property. But it's up to the land bank to you know, move at that pace, and it's obviously up to the city to, uh, to authorize the uh, land bank first. So that is my uh, presentation. I'm happy to answer questions if there are any, or I, I think this is, since it's just a presentation, maybe I'm just going to let folks you know, get in touch with me afterwards. But that's my contact information, um, my email, and my phone number. Uh, email is the best way to reach me, and that just gives you a bit of information about myself and my background. So thank you. Thank you very much. So, okay. Um, and then, as I said, we'll take up the, the item and the appointment of the directors and all of that will be uh, in the, of the first uh, regular meeting of the new year on January 10th, along with a public hearing before the start of that meeting. So then uh, let, we'll go through the rest of the, uh, the agenda. Item number one is the regularly scheduled meetings for the upcoming uh, 2022 calendar year in accordance with the uh, Freedom of Information Statutes at Section 1-225. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number one. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve the schedule for 2022, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the uh, motion carries unanimously. The schedule is approved. Item number two is the receiving place on file. It's just the city. On as a, a receiving place on file, it's a notification from the city plan of the approval of the resolution regarding the discontinuance of portions of Chase River Road and the associated easement modifications. Item number four is receiving place on file. It's the September 30, 2021 financial statements, the 2021 to 2022 operating budget, and the September 28, 2021 board of director minutes for the Palace Theater. Item number five is the delinquent tax. Um, was also a receiving place on file. It's the 2021-2022 delinquent taxpayers as of October 31, 2021, in accordance with section 7C-1 of the city charter. Mr. President. 
Yes, Alderman Markey. I have a question on this. Is there someone here that can speak on it? I was looking over these 120 day notices on all of these. Um, there's a ton of these that are over 120 days. Now, knowing of coming from the area, um, 60 days, 90 days is normal, but there are places like Target owing us $8,000 over 120 days. The bus company that we pay to support the children and transport them owes us money, okay? And hasn't paid it for over 120 days. So I'm wondering if there's something gonna be done or there's something's being done with some of this. I just grabbed eight names quickly and came up with $40,000 all over 120 days. So are we doing anything with this? Um, that's what I would like to know. Okay. Um, is Are either Mr. Caruso or Ms. Olson here? This was an R, RPF, so they may not have been here for tonight. So. If not, what we'll do is um, rather than receive this in place on a file tonight, we'll just hold it over still as an RPF because there's nothing more for us to do with it, but hold it over as an RPF on the next agenda. And then we can request someone from the tax collector's office to address those questions. Thank you, Mr. Frank President. is here. I'm sorry. I apologize. Frank is here. Mr. Caruso, are you here? Yeah, I think so. Am I, am I moved? No, you're, you're vaguely coming through. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I could look at the link. Our collections are actually pretty good. I, you know, what is the one with? Is it police extra duty? What What was the one with Target? I don't. Um, all these are over 120 days overdue. What? But he's uh, asking, what's the what's the item that's owed for Target? Is it police extra duty or is it a tax delinquency? Uh, what came up with us is that was handed to us was just the. Uh, Tax delinquencies for $8,000. I don't know if it's anything else because I don't know the codes. Um, I mean, that was one of them. And it's all over 120 days old. It's not current stuff either, so. Mr. President. Alderman Nguyen. Thank you. To piggyback what Alderman Market was saying, I think this is the first time we got the report in a detailed matter like that with the codes um and all the different people or companies that owe the taxes normally we just get the names and the basically call it a short summary so now we never really got 30 60 90 120 days or what have you um so when we saw that that was one of our questions of why it was brought up did they mean to send it to us in that matter or is this like a new version that's going to that, Move that file is sent every twice a year. That's by this charter. I have to send it twice a year. The full detail is there every time. We've we've never sent just a summary. It's always the full detail. I think it may be in the past. It's come as a as a disc to us or something that somebody may not have opened, which is why they're not aware that it was provided previously. So because we've always um, sent full detail. That's we've never sent just the summary. So what what do you do? Um, Frank, if you can just maybe just address it for now generally, and we'll see if we need to do something more specific. But what what's the process like with someone like a target who is 120 days in arrears in monies that they owe to the city? What steps would the city take to collect those funds? Well, I mean, if it's if it's taxes, it's out to a warrant. We have it out to a collections to to a, uh, a marshal for collections. Extra duty. Sometimes they run a little late. You know the, the police extra duty sometimes it catches up, but but it you know some sometimes the company is a little little behind in paying. Okay. We also do we also use um, liens and stuff. I mean, like there's a liquid restaurant and lounge that owes us ninety six hundred dollars from two thousand seventeen, um, and that's dated twenty seventeen. So it's not like it's anything local. That's so you're talking a long distance back. Um, and like I said, the bus company we pay them. Um, are we going to stop and hold the $2,500 until they pay them to release that to them? Or are we just going to keep paying them and they're not going to pay us back? That's one of the other questions. No, we hold the checks. We, we don't release checks if they owe us money. Okay, so the Durham bus company isn't getting paid until they pay us back then. Well, we hold the checks, right? We, we, get, a, before, we get a check run from finance before we release any checks. Oh yeah, I, I know. I understand how that works. I understand how the finance works. You hold it in, in lieu of, and then pay them afterwards. 
I just want to make sure because it just kind of seems strange being 120 days and buses are still running and they have to be paying people somehow and they're not paying us. So that's why I'm asking. And the same thing with the restaurant and lounge. We have a lien on there. I mean, you're talking four years. We should be doing something like that, correct? Well, if it's police, I mean, it's probably out of business. There's a lot of old stuff that's out of business on that. You know, they're gone. There's not much we could do. We have liens on it, but there's not much we could do once they once business goes out. There's not much we could do. We turn it over to legal and you know small claims, but if a business is gone, it's hard to collect. Okay, I think I mean it was great looking at these numbers. All my business background, I love seeing numbers. Always works great for me. Um, but again, that's why I was asking those questions because there's a lot of money sitting out there. And that's why I was wondering how we're going about it. The bus company one just flew. I mean, when I saw that one, it just kind of, that was a real strange one. So that's why I was questioning it and kept looking deeper. But only 120 and over. I understand four months is normal for some business, especially nowadays. So, Okay, I want to thank you for your answers on that one. All right, so it'll stay as a receive in place on file number five. Number six is the approval of an agreement with Abbott Terrace Health Center at no cost to the city for the Waterbury Career Academy Nurses Aid Program. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number six. Alderman Lop Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the agreement, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion um, carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item seven is an agreement to purchase and sell with Creative Recreation LLC in the not to exceed amount of $89,997 to purchase and install playground equipment at the State Street School. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number seven. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the agreement, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item eight is an agreement two to the professional services agreement with Mi milestone C LLC and the not to exceed amount of $35,922.40 for aerospace engineering and computer science curriculum. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number eight. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the agreement, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item number nine is an agreement with the Waterbury Youth Services Incorporated and the not to exceed amount of $83,631 for truancy prevention services as set forth in the Youth Services Bureau grant. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number nine. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the agreement and no vote to disapprove it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item number 10 is a construction contract with the Imperial Company Restoration Contractor Incorporated in the not to exceed amount of $1,310,474.55 for the Generali School Roof Replacement. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 10. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the construction contract and no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the construction contract is approved unanimously. Uh, Item number 11 is a request from Mark Levesque, the Billing Supervisor Bureau of Water for refunds totaling $7,589.28. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? 
to Nelson Angela. I'm sorry, Angela Nelson in the amount of $1,830.34, Angel Perez in the amount of $1,402.31, the Valley Mall Manor LLC for 80 Glenbrook Avenue at $550.96, 84 Glenbrook Avenue for $433.37, 86 Glenbrook Avenue for $655.49, 88 Glenbrook Avenue for $348.42, 90 Glenbrook at $1,602.81, 94 Glenbrook at $106.70, and 106 Glenbrook in the amount of $658.88. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 11. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the refunds, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify it by saying aye. Uh, Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the refunds are approved. Item 12 is uh, the fiscal year 2018 Homeland Security Grant Memorandum of Agreement. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 12. Item, uh, Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the uh, grant memorandum of understanding, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the grant memorandum of agreement is approved. Item 13 is an HIV prevention grant with the Connecticut Department of Health, Amendment Number 2 for uh, Department of Health Contract Number 2019-0140, which extends the contract to December 21st, 2023, it increases the total contract to $1,309,306. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 13. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve, a no vote to disapprove the contract. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the contract is approved. Item 14 is a Home Investment Partnerships American Rescue Plan in the amount of $3,248,404 and authorization for Mayor Neil M. O'Leary to submit agreement and execute any and all related documents. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 14. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be um, to approve the agreement and no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the Home Investment Partnership American Rescue Plan is approved. Item 15 is a substantial amendment to the CD year 46, 2020 to 2021 annual action plan in order to reallocate activity funding under the CARES Act. CDBG CV supplemental funds. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 15. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the amendment, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the amendment is approved. Item number 16 is approval request of the $2 million DECD financial assistance proposal to the city of Waterbury for the former Anaconda American Brass Complex at 130 Freight Street and 000 West Main Street. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 16. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the $2 million grant for Freight Street and no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the uh, assistance is approved. Item number 17 is approval of the $4 million DECD financial assistance proposal to the city of Waterbury for the Washington Avenue Business Park Animate Remediation and Reuse Phase 2, 698 South Main Street, Waterbury. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 17. Alderman Lopez? I second. 
Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote will be to approve the financial assistance proposal and no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the financial assistance proposal for Animet is approved. Item number 18 is a request for a budget transfer within the city's local capital improvement program state grant budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022 in the amount of $225,000. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 18. Alderman Lopez? A second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote will be to approve the budget transfer or no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the transfer is approved. Item number 19 is a request for a budget transfer within the Water Department Capital Improvement Fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022 in the amount of $100,000. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 19. Alderman Lopez? I second. The motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, then the yes vote will be to approve the transfer or no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the transfer is approved. Item number 20, we're going to hold this evening, and I'll explain that more when we get to item number 25, because that's the related um, transfer amount to make the purchase in 25 possible. Item number 21 is the city of Waterbury's financial status report for October 2021. Uh, that's a receiving place on file. Item number 22 is the approval of the Engineer Agreements and American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA ESSER funded and non ARPA ESSA funded for the on call engineering services between the City of Waterbury and CDM Smith Incorporated. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 22. Alderman Lopez? A second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote will be to approve the agreement with uh, CD. CDM Smith, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item number 23 is an engineering agreement for uh, both the American Rescue Plan Act ARPA ESSER funded and non ARPA ESSER funded for the on call engineering services between the city and Lorero Engineering Associates Incorporated. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 23. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve the agreement. A no vote would be to disapprove the agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the engineering agreement with Lorero Engineering Associates is approved. Item number 24 was withdrawn. Item number 25 was a request for a contract of sale for the purchase of 133.7 acres of land with frontage on Park Road, Waterbury from Norman Drubner for the purchase price of $1 million. Um, it, although it's not required by either statute or the city charter, the mayor has requested that we set this down for a public hearing. This is um, you know, the mayor's request for th that we consider this this purchase, but he would like to have a public hearing for it just to hear from the public. And so we are going to have a special meeting a week from tonight um, to deal with this. And we'll also deal at the time with item number 20, because that transfer is necessary for the funds if we do go forward with the purchase. So um, in, in order to get the notices into the newspaper in time for it to be meaningful, we've authorized the clerk to go ahead and do that. And their office, his office has done that. But what I would ask tonight is that we vote to set the public hearing and ratify the notices for December 20th, Monday, December 20th at 6.30 um, uh, PM. So Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to set a public hearing on item number 25 for December 20th at 6.30 PM. Alderman Lopez, is there a second? I'll second. 
Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, hearing none, then a yes vote would be to set the public hearing and to ratify the notices that have already been published for that public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying, a, a yes vote would be to approve that, a no vote to disapprove those actions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Mm -hmm. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the public hearing is set, the notice is ratified. Item number 20, and then that night, the special, the, the, the special meeting on the 20th, we will only deal with at this point, I believe items 20 and 25, so we can act on those um, because there is uh, so, some looking uh, idea that they wanna close by the end of the year if we're gonna do this for tax purposes. So item number 26 is the uh, request for an approval of the discontinuance of a portion of Chase River Road and associated modifications to the easements and utilities for King's property at 820. We're going the whole this evening and I'll explain that more when we get to item number 25 because that's the related um, transfer amount to make the purchase in 25 possible. Item number 21 is the City of Waterbury's financial status report for October 2021. Um, that's a receiving place on file. Item number 22, is the approval of the Engineer Agreements and American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA ESSA funded and non-ARPA ESSA funded for the on-call engineering services between the City of Waterbury and CDM Smith Incorporated. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 22. Alderman Lopez? A second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote will be to approve the agreement with uh, CDM. CDM Smith, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item number 23 is an engineering agreement for uh, both the American Rescue Plan Act ARPA ESSER funded and non ARPA ESSER funded for the on call engineering services between the city and Lorero Engineering Associates Incorporated. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 23. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve the agreement. A no vote would be to disapprove the agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the engineering agreement with Lorero Engineering Associates is approved. Item number 24 was withdrawn. Item number 25 was a request for a contract of sale for the purchase of 133.7 acres of land with frontage on Park Road, Waterbury from Norman Drubner for the purchase price of $1 million. Um, it, although it's not required by either statute or the city charter, the mayor has requested that we set this down for a public hearing. This is um, you know, the mayor's request for th that we consider this this purchase, but he would like to have a public hearing for it just to hear from the public. And so we are going to have a special meeting a week from tonight um, to deal with this. And we'll also deal at the time with item number 20 because that transfer is necessary for the funds if we do go forward with the purchase. So um, in, in order to get the notices into the newspaper in time for it to be meaningful, we've authorized the clerk to go ahead and do that and their office, his office has done that. But what I would ask tonight is that we vote to set the public hearing and ratify the notices for December 20th, Monday, December 20th at 6.30 um, uh, p.m. So Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to set a public hearing on item number 25 for December 20th. It's 6.30 p.m. Alderman Lopez, is there a second? I'll second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, hearing none, then a yes vote would be to set the public hearing and to ratify the notices that have already been published for that public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying, a, a yes vote would be to approve that, a no vote to disapprove those actions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the public hearing is set, the notice is ratified. Item number 20, and then that night, the special, the, the, the special meeting on the 20th, we will only deal with at this point, I believe items 20 and 25. So we can act on those um, because there is 
uh, so, some looking uh, idea that, that they want to close by the end of the year if we're going to do this for tax purposes. So item number 26 is the uh, request for an approval of the discontinuance of a portion of Chase River Road and associated modifications to the easements and utilities for King's property at 800 Chase River Road, um, known as Lot 6 WIC, the Waterbury Industrial Commons. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 26. Alderman Lopez? I second. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, Mr. Alderman. President, I have a question. Alderman Roman? Yeah, uh, thank you for recognizing me, Mr. President. My question is in regards to um, Waterbury's current stormwater management plan. Um, it speaks to develop, developing, implementing an infrastructure uh, for repair, rehabilitation, and a repair program for the easement structure. Would someone be able to answer um, when the last time the structure was inspected, repaired, or upgraded? Attorney uh, Jean Perry Phillips from Pullman and Comley, who's handling this transaction from the city, is with us this evening. So I'll turn it over to her and see um, Attorney F Perry Phillips if you can answer those questions. Um, uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I am unfortunately cannot speak specifically to that, but we do have representatives from the city on this call. Um, Mr. Brammer, are, are you able to address that question? Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, Cliff Brammer, Assistant City Planner. Um, regards to specific stormwater um, catch basins, uh, that is under review from the original building permit for phase one. Um, they will have the ability to full disconnect from that system. That's their ultimate goal in this is that they would, would disconnect from the city system and they could uh, sever any discharge in, into uh, the waterway. So if there was a potential spill, then that would shut down immediately. I guess that my, my follow up would be then, so are they obligated to have their own stormwater uh, pollution prevention plan? Uh, King Industries that is, sorry. It's, it's not a city requirement, but I believe it is their requirement from EPA. Okay. And would the city have a copy of that? Would they be um, able to request a copy of that stormwater prevention plan? They, yes, they would submit stormwater management plans associated with the building permit um, and site development. So throughout the phases of, of development, yes, they would update their stormwater management plan. But you're, if you're talking about an overall stormwater pollution control plan, that's an obligation to EPA, that, that question would have to go to uh, King Industries directly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Any, any further discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the discontinuance of the portion of Chase River Road and the associated modifications to easements and utilities for the King property. A no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the discontinu uh, discontinuance um, and easement modifications are approved. Item 27 is requesting an approval of a subordination of rights of access at 167 Maple Street, 128 North Elm Street, and 134 North Elm Street. Alderman Benelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 27. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the subordination of rights of access. A no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying mm -hmm. aye. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> The ayes have it, the motion uh, carries unanimously and the subordination of access rights are approved. Item number 28 is the approval, um, requesting approval of nine subsidiate partner agreements funded by the U.S. Uh, Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health Advancing Health Literacy Grant to the following entities, the Center for Human Development, $15,846, Community Health Center, $931,372, Grace Baptist Church, $279,880. Uh, 
Greater Waterbury Health Partnership, $471,395. Hispanic Coalition of Greater Waterbury, $102,638. New Opportunities Incorporated, $200,633. St. Mary's Hospital, $297,061. Stay Well Health Center, $356,855. And the Wheeler Family Health Center, $345,000. $310. Um, Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 28. And Alderman Hunter, I'm going to call on you for a second for this motion. I second that. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Alderman Lopez. Thank you for recognizing me. I will be recusing myself from voting on item number 28 this evening. Thank you. Okay. Mr. President. Alderwoman Weaver. I will also have to refuse myself. Okay, thank you. So, um, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Okay, and then for the record, Alderman Lopez and Alderwoman Weaver will be um, recusing themselves from the vote this evening. With respect to the remaining Alderman, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the nine subcipient part, subrecipient partner agreement. A no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously with the exception of Alderman Lopez and Alderwoman Weaver who have recused themselves and therefore the agreements are approved. Item number 29 is requesting approval on behalf of the police legal advisor, Mark Willett, for an agreement for towing services between the city and various companies as listed on the Schedule A to that agreement. And we had the most recent updated one was provided to you. So the following uh, companies would be uh, approved for tow contracts as of now. Durable Radiator and Auto Body Incorporated, Waterbury Towing and Recovery Incorporated, George Williamson Auto Electric Incorporated, John Gentile doing business as Lakewood Auto Painting, Eastwood Towing Incorporated, Avenue Auto Sales Incorporated, Town Plot Auto Body Incorporated, Karis Motors Incorporated. Alderman Bernelli, um, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 29. Alderman Lopez? I second. The motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Alderman Matthews? Yes, is there anyone from the police department or legal that can um, answer a few questions? Well, uh, yes. tell us what your questions are and we'll have to see if anyone's here who can answer them. Okay, um, it's come to my knowledge that there's a couple of companies that were approved um, contracts that they can no longer do business with the city of Waterbury due to two corruption um, incidents that happened under the Giordano administration. And I noticed that they're on there. And I also noticed that um, the original list, there was 11 people, 11 companies that were doing business with the city of Waterbury. And today um, we find out that there's only eight, the original eight that have always dealt with the city of Waterbury. And I wanna know why the other three were pulled off when their credentials are, if not the same as the people that got the contracts, but, uh, two of them are few and above of what the city of Waterbury is asking because they have contracts with the state of Connecticut with the state police at Troop L and Troop A. Attorney Daly, did you do you want to address that? Uh, sure. Um, number one, as far as Giordano, there, there is no prohibition that I that I know of that would prohibit uh, any of these eight uh, due to a. The former mayor Phil Giordano uh, and what went on in those days from uh, being approved tonight. Um, in terms of uh, the fact that there were eleven uh, tow applicants, tow companies that applied for this uh, for this position, um, three of them are still being vetted by the police department. So as of tonight, they're not they're not yet qualified. Um, one of the reasons I think has to do with uh, the contract language uh, indicating that a tower has to be in business under the, the name that it applies under uh, for at least uh, three years. And uh, those three companies, I think, are still being investigated uh, to see if they qualify under that contract provision. 
so to answer your question, uh, that's why those three are not on it tonight. Uh, they're still being vetted by the police department. Also, I have a question. Is this also do, has any dealing with the WTA, which is the Water Beer Towing Association, and they're um, wanting more information from these three companies because um, there's one that's up here that is uh, working as a company that never existed and they're getting grandfathered in because of the fact that um, it falls underneath the father's former name. I'm not sure. And, who also, you're... and also his trucks do not have a US DOT um, stickers on any of the I mean, on any of his trucks where everybody else is qualified that has US DOT um, certifications on their vehicles. Avenue, uh, J&O, Coates, um, Eastwood, Cares, all of them have it except for this one particular company. Which have, one are you talking you know, about, Ultimate Matthew? Uh, um, Gentile, John, uh, John Gentile and Lakewood Auto Body. They do not have any U.S. DOT stickers on their vehicles. I have pictures of it on my phone if anyone wants to see it. And I will be following up uh, sometime this week along with the captain that's in charge of this and the chief of police. That, that's probably what you should do because I, I can't answer that question. Uh, okay. I, didn't, I didn't vet them myself. That would be the police. So you probably should contact the police about that. Okay, I see uh, Dan Lawler's on the, on, the, on the cause. Can you um, answer any of the questions that I just asked, sir? The East Coast Company was thoroughly inspected by a lieutenant and an officer and okay. uh, seemed to be qualified that were that are tonight. Um, those are subsequently vetted through uh, the DMV, uh, working with our legal advisor who's also on the line and uh, forwarded to uh, Corp Council for action before this board tonight. Okay, and we'll, if, if those other three get uh, awarded contracts, when will they know? Well, that, would how, how, to, that would have to be approved by your board, sir, so we would have to wait until the next meeting. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Anything further? No, that's all. Thank you. Anyone else, anything further? All right, then the motion um, on the table is to approve the uh, towing services agreement with the eight companies that I had read off. A yes vote would be to approve the eight contracts, a no vote would be to disapprove them. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. All right, let's do a roll call vote. <clears throat> Oh, Mike, you're on. Hold on. I apologize. Alderman Bernardo. Yes. Alderman Cavallo. Yes. Alderman D.G. Alderman Powell. Yes. Alderman Dorsa. Yes. Alderman Hunter. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Markey. No. Alderman Matthews. No. Alderman Martinez McCarthy. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Roman. Yes. Alderman Salvio. Yes. All the women leave. Yes. All the women serve. Uh, without confirmation and with uh, no, just no discussion. It's just a yes or no vote. All the women, please. Okay, no. Thank you. All the women speak. Yes. We have twelve yes, three no. The motion carries, and the contracts are approved. Item number thirty is a request to consent to the sale. Uh, 46 Inman Avenue and to approve the assumption of a city mortgage for the purchaser. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 30. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the consent to the sale and the assumption of the mortgage and no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. 
the ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the um, sale and the assumption of the mortgage are approved. Item uh, standing committee is ta uh, re refunds for tax overpayments in the amount of $40,690.45. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion, uh, Alderman Lopez, is there a second? I second. Motion having made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the tax refunds. Uh, a no, no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> the ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the refunds are approved. Um, with that, there being no further business to come before us as a committee of the whole, Alderman Bernelli, I'd entertain a motion that we re return to the regular order of business. So moved. Alderman Lopez. Second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote will be to return. A no vote will be uh, opposed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The, we're now sitting. Um, we've returned to the regular order of business. Following items are on the consent calendar. I'm just going to run through the numbers and their status. Item one is on consent to approve. Item two, three, four, and five are receiving place on file. Item six, seven, and eight are on consent to approve. Item nine and 10 are consent to approve. Item 11 is on consent to approve. Items 12 and 13 and 14 are on consent to approve. Item 15 is on consent to approve. Item 16, item 17, item 18 are on consent to approve. Item 19, 20 are on con uh, ni item 19 is on consent to approve. Item 20 is held. Item 21 is a receiving place on file. Item 22 is on consent to approve. Item 23 is on consent to approve. Item 24 is withdrawn. Item 25 is on consent to approve a public hearing and ratify the notices associated therewith for December 20th at 6.30 p.m. Item 26 is on consent to approve. Item 27 is on consent to approve. Item 28 is on consent to approve. Mr. President, I have item 28. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Item 28 is on consent to approve. Nine. Yep, item 29 will... So I'm, I'm sorry, item 28 is not on consent to approve. We're not going to put that one on there. We're not going to put 29 on. Item 30 is on consent to approve, and the standing committees are on consent to approve. Okay, Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion with respect to the consent calendar? Motion to approve the consent calendar as read. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. So the consent calendar are the items I read. I want to just point out for everyone's edification, 28 and 29 are not on the consent calendar. Is there any further discussion or any changes to the consent calendar? Okay, a yes vote will be to approve the consent calendar as read, a no vote will be to disapprove it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously and the consent calendar is approved. Item 28. The Committee of the Whole recommends approval of the nine sub-recipient sub partner agreements funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health Advancing Health Literacy Grant for the nine recipients uh, listed. Uh, Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 28. Alderman uh, Hunter? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Alderman Lopez? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to recuse myself from voting on item number 28. Thank you, Alderman, Alderwoman Weaver. I also have to recuse myself. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the nine sub-recipient sub partner agreements. A no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Record will reflect that it was a unanimous vote by those voting, Alderman Lopez and Alderwoman Weaver having recused themselves. The motion carries and the subrecipient grants are approved. Item number 29 is the approval of the agreement for towing services between the city 
and the following companies, Durable Radiator and Auto, Waterbury Towing and Recovery, George Williamson Auto Electric, John Gentile doing business as Lakewood Auto Painting, Eastwood Towing, Avenue Auto Sales, Town Plot Auto Body, Karis Motors. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 29. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then we'll do a roll call vote. Ernie? You can't yes. hear him. I can't hear Mike. Oh. Can you hear him? I know, let's go off. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, Ernie, all the women to Yes. All the women to follow. Yes. All the women to follow. Yes. All the women to Yes. All the women Hunter. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Markey. No. Alderman Matthews. No. Alderman Martinez. Yes. Alderman Eugene. Yes. Alderman Roman. Yes. Alderman Salvio. Yes. Alderman Weaver. Yes. All the women similar? No. All the women front rooster? Yes. 12 yes, 3 no. The motion carries and the eight agreements are approved. Um, with that, there's no further uh, business to come before us this evening. I would just remind you that we are going to have a public uh, or a special meeting next week, beginning with a public hearing at 6 30 with respect to the purchase of the property at the top of Park Avenue. And we'll have a meeting to deal with that and the fund transfer necessary to uh, fund it if we go forward with it at the special meeting. Um, with that, is there anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none then, Alderman Brunelli. Motion to adjourn. Alderman Lopez. I second. The motion having been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We're adjourned. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you here next Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Waterbury. Narcan es un medicamento utilizado para prevenir los efectos de una sobredosis. Ayuda con el entrenamiento y la distribución de Narcan. Y Nora es una aplicación gratuita del Departamento de Salud de Connecticut. Use Nora para prevenir, tratar e informar sobredosis de opioides. También puede ayudar con las referencias para pruebas rápidas del VIH, hepatitis C y referidos para el tratamiento de abuso de sustancias. Si usted o alguien que ama está luchando con problemas de abuso de sustancias, por favor, ven a vernos. Mi nombre es Edwin León, soy un trabajador de alcance para el Departamento de Salud Pública en Waterbury.